I come from a place where the majority of people are, you know, the Muslim or the so-called Muslim masses. I can appreciate more that, you know, we discuss this topic because you can see from our experience here in the Tucson or in the United States where Muslims are the minority, that by talking Hadith and Sunnah, we arouse the anger of many people. You can see that some people come here and you know we have uh, they make a very violent reaction because our stand in the Quran alone and you know to reject the Hadith and Sunnah. And so I can appreciate more the hardship or the uh, danger faced by Dr. Khalifa when he was in the you know Middle East where the majority are Muslim. The reaction must be very, very violent to him and you know, I can imagine too that in most places where the Muslim masses are the majority, they will you know, give a very hard time or they will ridicule you at the least because you will stand against the Hadith of Islam. Incidentally, uh, there is a new book by Dr. Khalifa uh, about the Quran, Hadith, and Islam. So I draw most of the book back from the book and also from the Quran. We know from the Quran study in this matter that the Quran should be the one and only source for us as a guidance. We hear, let's see, because we started from the beginning of this matter as uh, to, to accept the Quran as the only source, we, we can we sort of take it for granted that you know, we, we take Quran as the only source. However, as I said, as as the person who comes from you know, the majority people, of majority the place where the majority are so called the most masses. The discussion of this really takes a great deal of courage if you want to say that in those places because you will face, like I said, a very violent reaction from them. And I think for myself, I'm still 
thing that I find a lot of people come here to learn the real truth from the Quran. Because this is the, the place, the first place that I can get a chance to really study what the Quran is. And what therefore I can see the real truth in, in the Quran. To my observation, uh, the Muslim masses around the world are generally ignorant of the Quran. They live, they do everything according to what the scholars say or what you know, the older generation or their parents say. And so they are they're never there, most of them never there to open the Quran and study it and they just follow and they just leave the discussion of the Quran to the scholars. But we are commanded in the Quran that we have to uphold the Quran and we have to uh, study the Quran to be a good Muslim. Because of the ignorance, uh, there is a tendency that the Muslim masses uh, tend to mix up the Quran with the, the other sources. Because they accept the Quran, but they also accept the Hadith and Sunnah and other sources uh, of jurisprudence as a guidance to the religion. And in the end, they tend to mix up everything. They say that this is from Quran and they don't bother to open it from Quran to check the, uh, whether uh, whereas in the real case it's not from the Quran. One of the good examples that I can find is uh, about the prohibition. Prohibition in the Quran is specifically stated only four. And, but if you go to, at least to my place, they will say that not only the four provision, but you have also another provision. Like you, you cannot eat something that lives in, or animals that live in two environment, or amphibious uh, animals. They say that, uh, I, I'm sure that this is this must be from the Hadith and Sunnah, but uh, in the end, people think that this comes from the Quran. And I met one guy here that say that also, that this is from the Quran, that you cannot eat this uh, activist animal. But when I say, well, you know, please show me the verse in the Quran, he, he doesn't dare to open the Quran. So I think there is a tendency to generally to mix up, finally they mix up Quran with other sources and that is why we have to study the Quran and the only Quran of the source. One of the most uh, popular reason for the advocates of Hadith and Sunnah is saying that, uh, in fact, we need Hadith and Sunnah to explain the Quran. Because Quran, Quran is not complete and Quran is not fully detailed, so we need Hadith and Sunnah to explain it. In fact, they, they, they are very ignorant of the Quran and the Iqtar, the person in the Quran that says that the Quran is complete, perfect and fully detailed. This is in the first one of the examples that I can find is the, in the first 629. <coughs> any creature on earth and any bird that flies with wings are all nations like you. We did not leave anything out of this picture. To the Lord they will be gathered. And also in the next verse, 639 says that those who reject our revelation are deaf, dumb, and in total darkness. Whomever God builds, he sends astray, and whomever he wills, he places on straight path. Also in the same surah, on verse 114 and 115. 114 says, Shall I seek other than God as a source of law, when he revealed to you this book fully detailed? 
even those who receive previous scripture don't benefit who can go from your law totally. Therefore, you shall not harbor any doubt. And what he can says, the work of your law is complete in truth and justice. In truth and justice. Nothing shall abrogate this work. He is the fear of the Lord. So therefore, this, this verse clearly shows to us that uh, this nullifies the argument from the Africans and Hadith and Sunnah that the Quran is not complete and not perfect and fully detailed. But uh, like I said, because the generally the Muslim masses are ignorant of the Quran, they do not bother to open the Quran and check uh, the argument. Another argument is saying that uh, we need Hadith and Sunnah to explain the Quran. And I met, uh, two days ago, I met a guy here in the University of Arizona that just said that. So I think this is uh, also a valid argument that Dr. Khalifa said in his book. Uh, many Muslims, uh, or so-called Muslims, let us say, uh, use this argument as advocates for Hadith and Sunnah. We know from the Quran that uh, only Allah will explain the Quran. We see that in the first 19 of Surah 75. you shall follow this Quran. And Michael says, then it is we who will explain it. So this is a very clear cut first that says that only Allah will explain the Quran. Another surah that I can find here is 55 verses 1 and 2. This is the surah most gracious of our Quran. The first thing. First says, God most gracious, and the second says, the one who teaches the Quran. So only we understand and we know from the Quran study that only Allah will teach us the Quran and understand, uh, leads us to understand the Quran. So it also nullifies another argument from the Hadith and Sunnah Africans that says, we need Hadith and Sunnah to explain the Quran because the Quran is not clear. In the second part of the book, I will try to convey some ideas from the Quran about Hadith and Sunnah. As we can see from the first part of the Buddha, we, we clearly see from the Quran that we don't make Hadith and Sunnah as source of religious duties because we, only, we have the one and only source which is the Quran. And the Quran is fully detailed, complete, and we don't need any other sources to explain the Quran. And only God, only Allah teaches no, why, why, then why, the, the question is why exist Hadith and Sunnah? What is the purpose of that? Before we discuss that, we will prove, we will see that uh, actually as uh, source sort of the religious duties in the Quran is complete and we don't need uh, other sources. Therefore, the Quran says that uh, we don't need any other sources and therefore nullifies the need for Hadith and Sunnah. But Hadith and Sunnah itself is also proof of wrong by itself because if we 
read many of Penny's books about Hadith and Sunnah, we can see that uh, there are so many contradictions in Hadith and Sunnah. And so we cannot, uh, we cannot uh, accept that as a source of uh, religious duties. If we use, uh, in mathematical jargon, we use what we call the proof by contradiction. So we want to prove something, that something is wrong. We assume first that this is correct, and then we find something inside that contradicts the assumption. Therefore, we can prove that this assumption is wrong. And I think this argument can be used also to prove that Hadith and Sunnah is wrong. Because uh, if we read the various book of Hadith, uh, we, s we can find that uh, there are many statements, statements in Hadith and Sunnah, some of them saying that Prophet Muhammad says, because the Hadith of Sunnah is attributed to the Prophet Muhammad, but the Prophet Muhammad says in one of the Hadiths, according to them, that do not write anything from me except from the Quran. So anything that you write from me besides the Quran, you shall erase it. And therefore, this also said, that if we assume that Hadith and Sunnah is wrong, we have to accept this. And therefore, this statement says that we cannot read, uh, we cannot write anything from him except the Quran, because the Quran is revealed from Allah to us through Muhammad. So, besides uh, everything besides the Quran, we cannot follow, because we only follow Muhammad when he talks about the Quran. So, this hadith says that uh, because we we cannot write anything from him except from the Quran. This nullifies the argument that we have to follow Hadith and Sunnah because the argument we, is, we assume that the, this is uh, Hadith and Sunnah is correct, but we find contradiction in it. So we prove that this is wrong. Another thing is Hadith that says when somebody asks the wife of Prophet Muhammad Aisha, uh, to explain about the character of Muhammad that we should follow. And the character of Muhammad, she says, is the Quran. Therefore, to follow Muhammad means to follow the Quran only, and only the Quran, and nothing else. And also, from the Quran study, we understand that the Quran says we don't need any other sources besides the Quran as a, a source for jurisprudence. And see that in Surah 6 also. Surah 6, verse 112 says, Additionally, we have accounted for every prophet enemies from among the human peoples and human peoples, who in front and narrate to each other fancy words in order to deceive. Had your Lord will, they would not have done it. You shall refuse to grab them and their intentions. Therefore, we can see very clearly from this from this uh, first that Allah said from apart from every prophet enemies among the human devils and gene devils, which marries to each other, because uh, we understand that uh, when the Jews receive the uh, Torah, then they narrate other sources besides Torah and the Jewish Talmud, which exactly consists of the same thing as Hadith and Sunnah in the Muslim world. So when we see that something is, is wrong with them, majority of the Muslims do, do not see why, what's wrong with us, because there is a clearly a, fa a very uh, there is a very clear parallelism between, between the Jews and the Muslims. Because the Jews fall into the trap of idol worship by creating Hadith and Sunnah in Talmud, the Muslim also falls into the same trap. 
another surah, and another verse in Quran that states that we don't need any other sources except the Quran is found in Surah 69, verse 38 to 47. It says, I solemnly swear by the things you see and the things you do not see. And 447 says, This is the utterance of the honorable messenger. It is not the utterance of a poet, however, rarely do you believe. Nor, it is, nor is it the utterance of the soothsayer, rarely do you take food. It is a revelation from the Lord of the universe. If he ever made up any utterances and attributed them to us, we would immediately punish him. And stop the revelation to him. None of you can protect him there. Therefore, the Prophet Muhammad is ordered by God not to utter anything besides the Quran. Now, after we see all these facts, we came back to the first question, why is the Hadith of Sinai system? What is the purpose of that? We understand from this uh, Quran study that Hadith and Sunnah is needed in this Quran, in, in, this, in this world, to distinguish between the true Muslim and the false Muslim. Because the majority of the uh, Muslim masses will fall into the same strat of Hadith and Sunnah. And therefore, by using the Hadith and Sunnah, we can distinguish between who is the true Muslim and who is the so-called Muslim, but actually they are not Muslim. Oh, wow. 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 O